Oh, it is an exciting day in the HOC. Check out what the Fronius Fairy dropped off. This little 21 pound box of badassery is the new Trans Tig 210. And don't let its size throw you off. It is small, but it is mighty. And we're gonna do some welding with it today. I'll put it through its paces, show you its strengths. And if you hang out to the end of the video, I'll even show you how you can get one of these sweet Fronius welding hoods for free. But before we gear up and strike our first arc, Let's get you a little bit better acquainted with our little friend back here. In true unboxing tradition, I've laid out everything trans tig on the bench behind me and I don't want to get really bogged down here. We're not going to camp out here. But the first thing you need to know about anything Fronius is the quality. The materials it's made with. This just feels awesome in the hand. The weight of it. I wish I could just hand it to you. You'd understand what I was talking about. And check this out. This torch head snaps in and out of this torch body. You turn that 180 degrees, it snaps out, you snap a new one in with a different setup for a different job, and you're off and ripping. The torch has controls on it, and again, it just feels good in the hand. It's beautifully wrapped, it's heavy, you can tell it's awesome. They give you a regulator. Fronius, the lunchbox over here, has additional consumables in it. What if you ever bought a welder and got additional consumables? Fronius has you covered. And I have here the additional foot pedal for this. This is an optional thing. You don't have to run the machine with the torch controls. This is a sweet little toe hook on it. And when you're moving around, you just hook your toe on it and you're ready off and ripping. And then there is this. The welder is inside here in this beautiful road case. Let's get this popped open. I'll show you what's inside. First thing coming out, it's your gas hose for regulators. Definitely going to need one of those. Next thing you're going to see is a load of power equipment because this can run on 110 and 220 current and it sips juice guys. I think if you get a hamster running in a wheel fast enough Probably could power this machine after that We got a stinger in here because you can stick well with this machine if you need to go out in the back 40 sands gas and get a job done Boom got you covered Look at this heavy duty ground clamp you ever buy a welder and just get one of those chintzy ground clamps Not this one. This one's got more earth than the earth itself and then of course, is the trans thing. Look at this thing. Come on, ain't it cute? <laughs> what have you ever been able to do that with a welder? Certainly not with this physique. Let's get it plugged in and check it out. Check this out. I drug out this 25 foot extension cord because everything we do today, we're gonna run through this cord in a regular 120 volt outlet and it invokes the PFC of what Fronius calls the power factor correction. What that means to you and I is the little robots inside the trans TIG can maximize the voltage to this without kicking off a circuit breaker up to 170 amps. Think it's gonna work? Let me know in the comments section. The lights are on and the trans tig is home. Check out this interface, it's actually really smart. Everything you'll commonly want to do is serviced right in the top menu here. You don't need to dig in the back menus. So we'll start over on the left over here. This first button right here purges the hose pack. I also really like that for setting the regulator. You don't have to keep bumping the pedal, right? Then we have the center button here. It allows us to toggle through menus. We push it in to select and deselect the current thing we're hovering over. Up in this corner here shows us everything that is currently on in the machine. Then we have our initial current, upslope, main currents, downslope, and final current. If we toggle one time more, we get our pulse settings, one more after that, and we have our tack. 2T, 4T, and stick are all set right here. And should you need to get into a back menu, we push this button and this button, and it takes us right there. This button takes us back out. Simple. As I pointed out, the trans tig here can do some stick welding and it is quite capable. I'm not gonna be doing any stick welding in this video because I'm not so capable, but the guys over at weld.com sure are and they put this machine through its paces, even welding a 6010 rod overhead. So if that's a feature you need from this machine, I'm gonna put a link down in the description. Go check it out because those guys have the answers you seek. Oh, it is time to do some welding and right out the gate, 
we're getting to some of my favorite features on the trans tick, the tack settings. This little guy is a tacking beast. And to explain how it works without getting too technical, is it uses some of the pulse features inside the machine to catch the sweet spot in the cycle of the arc where you're gonna get a clean, consistent, repeatable, easy to weld over tack every single time. And it lets you do it two ways. First way, you drop your tack, the machine flips into DC mode, just let it rip on out from there. And the second way is you use it in conjunction with the spot features in this machine and you can just drop tack after tack after tack for a predetermined amount of time that you set and that's exactly how we're using it today on my mini third hands. I'm in production mode on these and I got to get a bunch of eighth inch tacked up to 18 gauge and this is going to do it beautifully without blowing the material apart. Let me show you how I set this little guy up. Now, I've already messed around with this and played with the settings a bit, so I know what I need. But the first parameter we're going to want to set is the main current. So I know it works best at 120. We'll get it over there and we're good to go. Next thing we're going to set it up for is get it into the tack mode. A few clicks on the dial and boom, right there. Hit it. And I know this is best for me at 5. After that's set, we hit the button again. And the last thing we need to do is drop into a back menu. We're going to hit these two buttons. There we are, we're in the back menu. We're gonna use the spot weld feature in conjunction with this, and we're gonna set it to a quarter second. Hit the button, hit the button, and we're back out to the main menu now. Now this thing is gonna throw down some sweet, consistent, repeatable tags. Check this out. Awesome is that? You've got to be loving those tag settings in this machine. Consistent, save you a load of time. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Next thing to do is fuse weld the caps onto the bodies with this. We're going to use the pulse settings in the trans TIG to do that. But before I get into that though, I think I got a little ahead of myself because we really need to discuss this torch. Boom! Here it is. I restored it to the way it showed up at my doorstep. That way you can see exactly what you get when you order the trans tanks. Let's just go ahead and dig right into this thing. First things first, you can adjust the amperage settings right from the torch here. So, you're at the end of the 26 foot of this thing. You've crammed yourself up into some tight space, but you need some more hot electrons to get the job done. Guess who isn't crawling out there, that welder? You, because you can fly right from here. You can also initiate the arc from here and you can choke down the arc from here, which means you can manually pulse from the torch head. This is awesome. I can think of a million applications for it, but the first one that popped in my head was when you're welding tubing. You're always making those little adjustments as you're coming around. You can be choking down the arc in the adjustment periods, then come back full heat, and it's just gonna work beautifully. You can position the head any way you wanna position the head. And as I mentioned before, you can take the heads on and off this so you have different ones for different applications. Very cool. How much do I like this torch? Oh, a whole lot. I've never run a torch before with controls on it. I have not once yet felt like I needed to hook up the optional foot pedal. This thing, straight awesome. Full disclosure, at first, I was somewhat skeptical of that torch and it totally won me over, but enough of that. Let's get back to our mini third hand project here and fuse welding these caps on. We're gonna use the pulse settings inside the trans TIG. Now I've already seen the awesomeness is about to unleash but let me show you guys how we got there. First things first, we've got to get our main current set to 75 amps. So let's whip it around to there. Boom and done. Next, we got to get to the pulse features. And we're going to do that by swinging it this way, hitting on pulse, and we're going to set it up for one pulse per second. Done. Now, in the background, I already have this set up for the rule 33. 33 duty cycle, 33% duty cycle with a 33% background current. Check this out.
told you guys you were gonna love the pulse settings on this machine. It's unbelievable. I think it's important to point out, I'm not a career welder. I don't do this every day. This machine is a tool in here like any other. I think it shows the strengths of the trans -tick. You get yourself dialed in, get the machine dialed in, and you're just gonna get some great results. So let's move on with our project because it's really gonna show the strength of the power correction robots in here we've talked about before. We gotta get these copper snoots welded to these bodies. We're gonna use silicon bronze to do it. But copper soaks up heat. We're going to have to go in full attack mode, 170 amps on this. See if it can pull it out of the wall the way they say it can. Will it kick a breaker? Will it go to hit the duty cycle? Let's find out. I did six of those for a total of 12 of those really hot welds. The fan never kicked on once, ran totally silent, didn't hit the duty cycle, did not kick off a circuit breaker. Old Trans Tig over here is well up to the challenge. So with that said, I'm satisfied. I'd be very willing to end this video here and feel fully comfortable with what the Trans Tig can and cannot do. But I know there's a couple of you snap heads out there just dying to hit the comments section with but he only fuse welded thin stuff. How could I possibly know if the trans stick could weld heavier material? And just for you guys, one eighth inch stainless steel coupon over here, one sixteenth, three twelve rod. Let's run this thing. The trans stick handled that eighth inch stainless like butter. <laughs> Not my best welds ever, but believe me when I tell you, far from our worst. We welded stainless, we welded copper, we welded plain old steel with this machine, and we did it all on a regular 120 volt outlet. Guys, that's a beautiful thing, and that is what trans tick over here is all about. Down in the description, I put the links to the best price on this machine, links to the details on it directly through Fronius if you're interested in those sort of things, but, cannot close this video until we get the one thing I promised in the beginning out of the way. How do you get the free welding hood? Well, if you buy a TransTig 210, or its little brother, the 170, during the Beat the Heat promotion, Fronius is gonna send you one of these beautiful welding hoods when you register with my code right here. Boom, swag. <laughs> Guys, that is a wrap on this video. Hit the comments section with any questions you might have. There's a link to some of my metal cutting videos, and I'll catch you on the next one. Beautiful job.